Negative thinking is a major problem. If you're trying to be successful or happy, you have no room for negativity. Big thinking gets rid of negativity. Dreams and visions gets rid of negativity. Now, what you cannot do is bury yourself by using your success compared to other people. See, success is not how far you got, because somebody always further than you. Success ain't how far you got. Success is how far you got from where you start. Life will push, squeeze, pressure, and attempt to make you bend at the knee. Some become a victim to life. Things happen, pain, heartache, loss. We can either be the victim or the victor to these situations. So until your mind is open to the possibilities that I can do this, you would never be able to do it. Once the mind starts to believe it can be achieved, it then, only then, does it start to break down tactically how we can do this. Until then, you're gonna always lose. For me to understand, for me to be better, for me to be stronger, I must learn to suffer a little bit. I must learn to struggle a little bit. I cannot reap the rewards of success without understanding about struggles. If you want to go somewhere that only you would go, if you want to create something new and really live a life that was meant for you, because it's literally crafted by you, you have to take the first steps on faith. If you have a dream, don't just sit there. Get your ass up and make something happen. Sometimes you just have to move. Do something. Make a call. Reach out to someone. Google something. Learn something new. Set out what you believe in. Lay out the power you have. Actually, lay out the power that you have always had. Use this. Become this. And have this. Your power can take you, put you on your path to your success, to the place where you succeed. You have, and you always will have this, this potential to improve, this potential to adapt, and this potential to change. This is what you've been working for. Go on and receive that. Trying to get insight and see life as a puzzle and your goal in life is to seek the adventures that piece the puzzle together. Who are you? You're the thing that transforms who you are. Now you're also who you are, but on top of that, you're the thing that transforms who you are. You are the thing that isn't, you're the thing that becomes. And you should put the thing that becomes at a higher place than the thing that is. That means you also have to allow yourself to shake off those things about you that you might be pathologically attached to habits and people for that matter ways of thinking all of those things you have to allow yourself to shake those off and that's more like a burning that's why the phoenix is that's why the phoenix is the symbol that it is right it's old and it deteriorates it bursts into flame and then it's reborn it's like well do you want to be reborn it's like it's not the question the question is do you want to burst into flame and the answer to that generally is no but that's the wrong answer the right answer is you let all that nonsense burn away and you know and you might say well I don't know what I should leave behind and the answer to that is that's a lie you know some of the things that you should leave behind you all you have to do is ask yourself you'll come up with a list instantly of a hundred stupid things that you're doing that you know you could stop doing some of them maybe you don't know you could stop doing it's like well fine leave those alone for now but there's a bunch of things you perfectly know well that you could stop doing that would improve your life and so do that see what happens that's a good that's a good idea what's really interesting is self value real self worth comes from doing hard things we keep talking about self love we keep talking about loving yourself believing in yourself that happens naturally when you go through something difficult everyone who's listening right now i guarantee has been through something with Maybe they lost a friend. Maybe they've been through cancer. Maybe they lost their job and had to rebuild. Maybe they completely got destroyed during the pandemic and had to figure everything out with their help. The point is we've all done hard things and self-worth and self-value comes from recognizing the hardship you've been through 
and the growth that you made during that time. Now, if you're someone who's listening and saying, Jay, well, I'm not sure I've been through anything that challenging, well, that's your challenge. Go and figure out what it is that you want to do that's hard. Is it developing a new skill? Is it getting a qualification? Is it starting that business or dream that you've always wanted to do? What's that difficult thing you're going to do on your own with your friends, with the support of whoever's around you, but not with the crutch or the handicap of a partner? What are you going to build as a skill, as a tool, as a value yourself that's going to make you say, I've done something. And that's the beginning of it. The beginning is I've done something and I did that and I can do that. And when you do that, yes, there's going to be, you're going to validate the wrong things. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to give yourself praise for the wrong things. You're going to go through ego. You're going to do all of that. But there's still a belief of I can do hard things. I can do hard things by myself. And I know what value I bring to a relationship. Persistence is self-discipline in action. Your ability to persist in the face of all setbacks and temporary failures is essential to success in life. Napoleon Hill said, persistence is to the character of man as carbon is to steel. The primary reason for success is persistence. And likewise, the primary reason for failure is lack of persistence, quitting too soon. There is a direct link between self-discipline and self-esteem. Each time you discipline yourself to do what you should do when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not, your self-esteem increases. Each time you persist and force yourself to continue on, even when you feel like quitting, your self-esteem goes up. Each act of self-discipline strengthens every other act of self-discipline. Every act of persistence strengthens every other act of persistence. When you discipline yourself to persist over and over, you like and respect yourself more and more. You become stronger and more confident. Eventually, you become unstoppable. Persistence is its own reward. Every time you force yourself to persist on a task, whether it is large or small, you feel happier and better about yourself. When you go the extra mile and do more than you are paid for, or more than is expected, your self-esteem goes up. You feel more powerful and in greater control of your life. In your career, when you go the extra mile, you put yourself on the side of the angel. The primary difference between winners and losers in life is simple. Winners never quit and quitters never win. You can increase your ability to persist by talking to yourself positively. Say these words, I am unstoppable. Before you begin any major undertaking, pre-program yourself by telling yourself, I never give up. Before you can achieve anything worthwhile in life, you have to pass the persistence test. This is usually a snap quiz sprung on you unexpectedly with no warning. You suddenly face a major setback, problem, temporary failure, or even a complete disaster. When this happens, remind yourself that this is the testing time. This is when you demonstrate what you are really made of. This is when you show yourself and others the strength of your character and your true determination to succeed, your ability to respond effectively to setbacks. Your level of response, ability, is the measure of your readiness to succeed. When you experience a major setback or problem, you will feel temporarily stunned. This feeling is very much like a punch in the emotional solar plexus. You will be stopped for a few seconds or a few minutes. During this period, you will often feel discouraged or experience self-pity. You will say, why me? However, it is not how far you fall that counts, but rather how high you bounce. Your aim is to bounce back as quickly as possible. Resilience in the face of unexpected reversals is vital to long-term success. Remember the warrior's creed. I will lay me down to bleed a while and then rise and fight again. Don't be surprised, shocked, or set back when things go wrong. Your best laid plans will often fall apart. Instead, expect disappointments and setbacks as a part of life. Take a deep breath, pick up the pieces, and continue onward. Our minds, our thinking, controls our destinies here on Earth to a degree totally unsuspected by the great majority of people. When you think about it a moment, it becomes so obvious, so clear and simple. Well then, if we become what we think about, and if we can control our minds, we can pretty well tell our own future. And that's the point I want to make. That's what I meant when I said earlier that each one of us is the architect of the structure fashioned by our years. This means that if we're confused about what we wish to become or accomplish, our lives, our environment will mirror that confusion. 
It also means that if we know what it is we seek, that it will, it must be accomplished. Barring an act of God or a catastrophe over which we have no control, we as individuals can call our own shots for the rest of our lives. We can know what it means to go through life from one success to another, to play life according to the rules and reap the rewards. We can know what it means to have peace of mind and live calm, cheerful, successful lives. You are at this moment the sum total of your thoughts to this point, for there is nothing else you can be. And five years from now, you can be and have anything you set your entire mind and heart upon.